Let's do an example where we use conservation of energy, where we calculate energy done by non-conservative forces. So Alice is working on a roof at the top, which slants at an angle of 24 degrees. She is a vertical distance 3 meters above the position where the roof ends. She has a 50 kilogram box of shingles that she no longer needs on the roof, so with a little push, gives them a half meter per second velocity down the roof. If the coefficient of friction is 0.35, what is the speed of the box when it falls off the edge of the roof? And we'll use conservation of energy. The first step is a picture. So we have this roof, and here's the edge of the roof. And she starts three vertical meters above that at the top of the roof. So we have this box of shingles, 50 kilograms, and it slides down the edge along the roof. It starts with an initial velocity of a half meter per second. Coefficient of friction is 0.35. The roof makes an angle of 24 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The first thing we want to do is analyze forces. So the object is my box. What are the forces on this? Well, there's gravity, and that's fine. There's also a normal force, and we know that there's friction in this example as well. Well, what can we say with regards to conservation of energy? Well, gravity is a conservative force, so that's no problem. Now, the normal force always points perpendicular to the surface. The velocity is parallel to the surface, so we, that the no we know that the normal force is perpendicular to the velocity throughout the problem, so it isn't doing any work on the object as it moves. Friction, of course, is a non-conservative force, and so we're going to calculate the work that friction does to be able to use conservation of energy. Well, the first step is we need a coordinate system. I've set my zero here at the bottom of the roof and set a positive y-axis up. This will allow me to create a mathematical representation of my potential energy function. That starts with the force. With this coordinate system, the force due to gravity points to the center of the Earth, which would be in the negative y direction. It has a magnitude of the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. If I just look at the components, then I have the force is equal to negative mg. I want a potential energy, which is the negative antiderivative of that force, with respect to position. So that's mg times the y-coordinate plus an additive constant. So I need to establish a zero of potential energy. I've set my zero for potential energy here at y is equal to zero. So u, the potential energy evaluated at zero, is equal to zero. Well, that just sets the additive constant equal to zero, and so I have my potential energy function, which is just mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the y-coordinate. Now I need to set up my initial and final energies. Initially, I have potential energy, which is mg times the y-coordinate, and it starts at a height h. It also does have some initial kinetic energy. I was told it started with this velocity, so it has a kinetic energy of 1 half times the mass times the initial speed squared. And there's also then work done by non-conservative forces that's going to subtract from that energy, so I'm including it here on my list of initial energies. In the end, there will be some final kinetic energy. Its potential energy will be zero, and so the kinetic energy will be one-half the mass times the final speed squared, which is what I want to know. I know h, I know v sub i, and I know the mass, but I can't find the final speed yet because I don't know the work done by the non-conservative force of friction. So let's do that next. I'm going to start with a free body diagram. I've set up a couple pairs of axes, one set parallel and perpendicular to the ground, and the other set a parallel and perpendicular to the angle of the roof. So here are my forces. There's a force due to gravity down, the normal force perpendicular to the surface, and the frictional force tangential to, to the surface in the opposite direction of the motion of the object relative to the agent. The object is sliding down, so the frictional force will be up the surface. I've decided a coordinate system to be positive x in the direction of the motion of the object. So what is the force due to gravity? To find that, I need to find its components along the y and x axis. So I draw a line from the 
tip of the force to the axis such that it makes a perpendicular line. And now I have a right triangle where the magnitude of the force is the hypotenuse. So now I can find its components. The x component in blue, given that this is my angle of interest, I was given this angle here, which is 24 degrees, and every other angle is exactly the same. So I know that this angle right here is that angle theta of 24 degrees. So the x component is the hypotenuse of that triangle, which is the magnitude of the force, mass times the acceleration due to gravity, times sine theta, because the x component is opposite the angle I'm interested in. And it is in the positive x direction. Here's the y-axis, it's on the positive side. The y component is the magnitude cosine theta, and it's in the, in the negative y direction. I don't need to break the others into components. The normal force is entirely directed in the positive y-axis, and the frictional force is entirely in the negative x direction, and it has a magnitude of the coefficient of friction times the normal force. I know that this sum is equal to the mass times the acceleration, and there's no acceleration along the y-axis. I need to calculate the work done by friction. And to do that, I need to find what the frictional force is. And to do that, I need to find out what the normal force is, but I think I can find that by looking at the y-component. Given that the sum of all the y-components is equal to zero, I find that the magnitude of the normal force is mass times g times cosine theta. You substitute that into the expression for the frictional force. So the frictional force is then negative mu times the magnitude of the normal force along the x-axis. So remember, I'm not doing a full Newton's second law analysis. I'm just using enough of Newton's laws to be able to get me a representation of the frictional force so I can calculate the work done by it. Now that I have, I need to find the displacement vector. Its motion is in a straight line, and the frictional force is a constant, so I can just take the dot product of these two vectors to find the work done by this force. Well, remember, it's just sliding down the incline, and this would be the displacement vector, I need to know the length that it slid, and the displacement vector is pointing in the positive x direction given the coordinate system I established here. So the magnitude of that vector is h over sine theta because I was given this height in the beginning, and it's pointing in the positive x direction. I can now calculate the work done by non-conservative forces, which is the dot product of those two vectors. That's just the product of the two x components, and so I'm given this expression, which I simplify because sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta, and now I have a term for the work done by non-conservative forces in terms of everything I know. Back to my problem, I now have an expression for the work done by the non-conservative forces. Note that it's negative, so it's going to be removing energy from my initial energy, so that makes sense. I can now equate the list from my initial column with my final column, and I can go ahead and solve the problem. It looks like I can divide out the mass from every term, and if I multiply by 2, I get an expression for v final squared, which is equal to v initial squared, this term, plus 2gh, this term, minus the frictional term, 2 mu gh over tangent theta. And this makes sense. My final velocity has a term from the initial velocity. There's a positive contribution due to the work done by gravity. And then there's a term that lowers it due to the friction. If I put in numbers, my calculator tells me that v squared is 12.83, or the final velocity is 3.58 meters per second. That number is not too high or too low, so it seems reasonable. That gives me some confidence that I have the right answer. Even when non-conservative forces do network on the system, energy is still conserved, and we can use conservation of energy if we can calculate what that work is.